Have you ever wanted to get that really useful second screen available to you that you have in Lightroom Classic in Photoshop? Well, in this really short video, I'm gonna show you a quick trick that gives you precisely that capability. Hi, I'm Paul from MasteringPortraitPhotography.com. In this quick video, I'm gonna show you how to get that really useful second screen in Photoshop, just as you have in Lightroom. Now, all of us Lightroom Classic users, we're all used to be able to see a grid on our main window, and then with a simple click of a button, we can see a preview or a full screen view of each and every image we click on. It's really useful when you're working around the image that I can see them small on one screen and big on another. Additionally, if I want to crop an image, I find it so much easier while I'm cropping that I can see exactly, exactly how the image is going to look on my second screen. I know you sort of get a feel for it, but it's got grid lines and crop lines, and I never quite get my head around the bits of the image that I can still see. I find it so much more useful when I'm looking at a second window. Well, of course, in Photoshop, you can't really do that, but there is a trick. So let's open this image in Photoshop, and I will show you. So here's my image. Now, of course, the traditional way of getting a second view of your file or view of your image onto another screen is to go to Window, Arrange, and then create a new window for this particular file. All I then do is I drag it across into my second screen, I expand the size of it, I zoom in a little bit, and I am seeing a perfect second copy of exactly the same file. But the problem with that is I have to do all of this stuff every single time. And also, whenever I close, let's close this window down here, I have to remember that I've still got two windows open and I have to close both of them. So what if there was a quicker and easier way? Well, good news, there is. Now, most of us are used to having the navigator window somewhere around and about. If you go to window, mine's disabled at the moment, and hit enable, it appears up there somewhere in the top right in one of my panels. Sometimes it'll just appear in the middle of your file. We all do this, but what if it could be a whole lot more useful? Well, it can. If you enable that and then just drag it across onto your second window, and then simply scale it to fill the window, there it is. It's that simple. And of course, it has the added advantage that if, for instance, I decide to edit uh, a mask, so if I alter option click on my mask here, I'm now working on the mask for that eye, I'm still seeing what the full and finished image on my other window is gonna look like. On that second screen, I'm seeing the finished file even though I'm editing a mask on my main screen and that's really really useful for me because I can compare the two I can get a real feel for it let me just undo that and hit zero um, additionally of course if I'm just doing any retouching on a layer then I can see exactly what that retouch is so I can be working in detail on some eyelashes um, and then I can see exactly how that detail is going to look on the main image full size really really useful now if you want to change you can see on the second screen, you can see that bounding box. The bounding box here is simply showing me um, exactly which bit of the image I'm looking at. If you want it to be a different color, really simple. Just go to the panel options for the navigator and you can just change it. There you go, I can change it to be light red or any color I like. So I like it to be a color that's fairly neutral so it's not impeding my understanding of the image, but if you want it red or yellow or green or pink, go for it. There you have it, a really quick and simple way of getting that second screen in Photoshop. And there's one more advantage to that over the just creating a new window for your file. Every time you open Photoshop, it'll be there. Every time you start Photoshop, it's part of your workspace. You can save that as part of your workspace so that you always have access to it. It's quick, it's simple, and it's incredibly useful. I hope this trick has been useful for you too. I'm Paul from MasteringPortraitPhotography.com. If you found this video useful, head over to Mastering Portrait Photography where you will find a whole load more tricks, tips, walkthroughs, anything to do with portrait photography really. And of course, it's also the home of the portrait of the Mastering Portrait Photography podcast. But until next time, 
be kind to yourself. Take care. 